Hi everyone, this is Dr. Keith. We're going to work through some examples of uh, Excel Solver tool. So uh, the file I want you to get is the one that's likely on Learning Suite in your class. Go to your schedule, scroll down until you find the Excel 2 Solver Day. Uh, if your schedule is similar to mine, it'll be somewhere after the measurement lecture. And download this file right here, work through examples of solver optimization problems. Get that opened up and then let's get that started. Okay, so here's our Excel file. You probably will have started on, uh, when you open it up, this staffing tab down here. Well, or at least if you did, just go ahead and click on Donuts Prepared, and that's where we'll, where, uh, we'll begin. All right, back up here. So, what we have here is a donut store that is trying to decide how many donuts should we make each day in order to maximize profit. So with Solver, there's always something that we're trying to maximize or minimize or set equal to a certain value. In this case, it's profit. One of the rules with Solver is that whatever cell you're trying to optimize is going to have a formula in it. In this case, it's some product. Some product works by taking a set of cells, multiplying them by another set of cells, and then adding the multiplied pairs together. 20 times 5 cents plus 20 times 30 cents and so forth. So optimized cell will always have a formula and then there's some cells or a cell that we want to have solver set for us. In this case it's how many donuts of each type should we make in order to optimize profit given our various constraints. So here's our list of constraints. We have a cost, a sale price, or a resulting profit per donut. Then we have a certain amount of labor available and we can't use more than that uh, in making our donuts. And then we have a range of demand, or a range that we want the number of donuts made to fall between. So, let's go ahead and open up Solver, and we'll do that by going to the Data tab, if you're not already there. And you should see over here in Analysis an option called Solver. If you don't have that, if this is the first time you've, you've done anything with Solver before, uh, it's because you haven't enabled the add-in. So to do that, you're going to come over here to the File tab, scroll down to Options, now go to Add-ins, and then lastly come down here to Manage Excel Add-ins Go, and you want to make sure that the Solver add-in right here is checked. Once that's checked and you hit OK, your Solver button should appear right over here under the Data tab in the Analysis group. Alright, I'm going to move this off the screen so I can include all of this part, but just know that's where I'm clicking to begin Solver. All right, let's turn it on here, open it up. So here's our window. Let's start, first things first, by setting our objective. Well, the objective is found in a cell. In this case, it's cell uh, B13. And we have three ways we can optimize it. We can maximize it, minimize it, or set it to a particular value. And then we can plug the value in here. Well, that doesn't apply. What we want here is to maximize profit. And then we have an option to change variable cells. In this case, I'm just going to click and drag and select all three of these cells right here. So Excel is smart enough to look and see uh, what other formulas depend on these cells and it understands um, uh, how profit is, is calculated. Now whenever you're uh, setting changing variable cells, just know that when solver's done, what's left in here is going to be a set of constants. It's not, in other words, there won't be a formula or function in any of these cells. Uh, it's going to be a particular number placed in there. So the thing, the, ver the cells changed will always have a constant. The objective cell will also ha always have a formula which you put in there uh, to start with. Or in the case of this class, we'll have a lot of them there for you. So next, we have some constraints we need to add. And I want to do these one at a time and show you exactly how it works. Before I add any constraints, I'm just going to click Solve. And it says, OK, the objective cell values do not converge. It came up with zero on these. It, it, it doesn't work without some constraints it needs to work within. So I'm going to check Return to Solver Parameters dialog and then hit OK. And I'm going to come back here and start with the first constraint I can think of. Well, as I look at this, I know that, um, OK, I can't make less than the, the min de demand, and I can't make more than the max demand. So let's add that constraint in there. So I'm going to click Add, and the cell reference is the same cells that I want to be changed or optimized. These have to be less than or greater than, sorry, less than or equal to 
our max demand right here. I'm going to select those cells. All right, so I have the donuts made have got to be less than or equal to the max. All right, I'm going to add that, and notice it disappears and resets. What happened there is that, whoops, there we go. It placed that constraint right here in this list. So I'm going to go back to the Add dialog box and add another one. These same three cells must be greater than or equal to min demand. And plug that one in there. Hit OK. Now I've got two constraints. Now this isn't all that I'm going to need yet, but I'm going to go ahead and solve and see what happens now. All right, in this case it says solver found a solution. All constraints and optimally conditions are satisfied. Uh, let's take a look and see what it came up with. All right, profit $146. It wants us to make 250, 200, and 150. Well, look, this is just the maximum amount of uh, demand. Well, that, that makes sense. If I can sell this much, I should go ahead and make this much. The problem is we violated uh, another constraint on this page, in particular, we can't use more than the labor available. All right, no problem, I'm gonna hit OK, and because this is checked right here, it's gonna take me back to the solver parameters box. I'm gonna add in one more constraint. In this case, labor used must be less than or equal to labor available. Okay, add that in. Now, before I solve this, there's a couple of other things I wanna draw your attention to. First of all, solving method. I want you to always start with simplex LP. All right, I'm not going to go into the details why. If this formula or solving method can't be used, it will automatically select a different one for you. But if this can be used, I want you to use that one. Therefore, start each problem off by using Simplex LP. The other thing you'll likely need to do is go to Options and just check and make sure that Ignore Integer Constraints is not selected. Okay, I'll talk about what that means in just a second. So let's hit OK and just make sure that that's not selected and solve. Alright, solver found a solution. All constraints are satisfied. Labor used is equal to labor available and it wants us to make 150 holes, 130 regular, 150 special. And that'll give us $120. So hopefully you came up with the same thing. If you didn't, double check all of the, uh, the cell references and parameters. I'm going to hit OK for now. Uh, in this case, we didn't have a problem with the integer constraint. I'll show you what that means in just a minute. But let's let's finish or close this solved solution now. And remember, the solution is right here, the number of, of each donut type made. Um, in addition, this, th this solution is what gives us a profit of 120. It's possible in some cases for there to be more than one solution, meaning I could have a different combination of holes, regular and special, that still gives me um, $120 in profit. In this case, there's not. There's just one solution. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Go down to the bottom and click on the Shipping tab. For those of you that have this on mute, I'll just show. I want you to click on the Shipping tab down here now. now. Alright, back up top. Actually, I need to scroll down a little bit. So, here we have uh, another problem, this shipping cost table. So, we make uh, certain products that need, and these products are made in Los Angeles, St. Louis, and Boston, and they need to be shipped to Denver, Houston, Atlanta, Miami, Seattle, and Detroit. All right, the problem is there's different shipping costs to ship from each of these places to each of those places. So down here in this table, we have the number of units needed at each of these locations to sell, and then we have here some options. I'm just going to delete them out for now. 25, those numbers were just dummy data to show you uh, how each of the formulas worked. But we want a solver to tell us how many we should ship from each of these locations to minimize total shipping costs. All right, so if I leave the dummy data in there, it says there's gonna be 450 made based on that. However, I don't have a min and a max demand anymore. I have simply a number needed. I have one, I, I, I want to constrain the total number shipped to be exactly the number needed. So let's begin. Uh, open your solver uh, parameters dialog box. Remember it's in the data tab. And then once you click on data, it's over here on the right. Okay, so open this up. And let's start by setting our objective. In this case, our objective is we want to minimize shipping cost. Well, this cell contains total shipping costs. 
Therefore, that's going to be my objective, and I want to click min to minimize it. What does solver change? I want solver to tell me where I should make each of my products. So again, since I know exactly how many need to be made, that's not a problem. The problem is I don't know how many to make from each location to get the lowest shipping cost based on this shipping cost table right here. So what I want Excel to change is all of these cells right in here. I don't want them to change these cells. This is just simply the total. Or these cells, these are also totals. I want that to separate I want Solver to separate out where they should be shipped from. Alright, so as usual, let's come over here and uh, don't forget to start off with simplex. <coughs> Excuse me. We're gonna click solve and it's gonna tell us, oh wow, I actually did find a solution. There you go. It did find a solution, and the solution is to ship nothing from anywhere. And that would give us zero shipping costs. Well that's fantastic. And does absolutely zero good because we realize that, alright, wait a minute, that means that we don't produce anything, we don't make any money. Number shipped obviously needs to equal number needed. So I click OK and I realize, okay, I'm going to have to add a constraint. So I click Add and I say, alright, number needed must equal number shipped. So one question you might have is, does it matter what order they go in? Could I have clicked number shipped needs to, e can, uh, needs to equal number needed? Yes, that's perfectly fine. There's always um, a few different ways to do each of these things. So I'm going to click OK. I come back here. Here's my constraint. I click Solve. And it says, OK, we found a solution. Uh, you're going to ship everything from St. Louis uh, and a little bit from Los Angeles. And your shipping costs will be just under 50000 Well, OK, that seems to make sense because it seems to be cheaper to ship from St. Louis until I look down here at this table and I find out that okay I have a starting inventory right here and then I have a number remaining right here well wait a minute negative 550 it's impossible to have n an inventory of negative 550 so I must need another constraint alright so let's go back here and click OK in this case the constraint I need is to uh, make sure that the number remaining is never negative so I'm going to click add select number remaining and say this must always be greater than or equal to zero. Now you might ask, well, why not just equal to zero? Well, it's possible that I could have inventory remaining uh, and still be able to um, uh, have lower shipping, lower shipping costs. So I'm going to go back here to greater than or equal to zero. Hit OK solve. Okay, here we go. 150 from Los Angeles, to, you know, this seems to make sense. My numbers match up. 1020, 1020. I never get below zero. And notice how in this case I have 130 remaining and 100 remaining over here. Um, that's because I started with so much inventory that I didn't need to, to ship any more than 270 from here and 400 from here in order to meet my total demand. Alright, so I'm going to click OK. And that works. It used Simplex LP. This problem is solved. Let's click Close. Now go down to your bottom. Let's move on to the um, transistors example. So down here, transistors. Here we have uh, a bunch of technicians that can make various transistors at a manufacturing plant. Now some of them, each of these technicians can only make certain transistors. For example, technician A can only make uh, one and two and, and so forth at the table. The X means that he or she can't make that product. Down here, it looks like I've left the previous answers in. Let's delete those out and then zero through those, or zero them out. Down here I have my demand and because there's no max and min demand, that means I want to make exactly that many. I have my different products, and then I want Solver to tell me how many units each tech should make. Down here you see an hours worked, hours available, and this is signifying obviously that I can't work or use more hours than, than is available. So let's start with, with that constraint. And down here you can see we have a total profit made based on our uh, unit profit table right here. Clearly we want to maximize profit. So, turn on solver. 
I want you to reset all right here. Let's clear all these out. Okay, if unless they were already cleared out. So our objective is to set profit, uh, to maximize profit, excuse me. And we want to do that by changing the following cells, how many units each tech makes. And notice that these numbers are going to go into some formulas here in the make box, which must equal demand. So we can see a couple constraints. Let's start with, with um, actually let's start down here with this hours work constraint. So let's add a constraint. Hours worked must be less than or equal to hours available. We hit OK. Let's solve it. And it says, OK, the objective cell values do not converge. That'll happen sometimes if you don't have um, an adequate number of constraints to come up with an optimal solution. So when you see it this, it typically means you're missing constraints. Or it's also possible that you have two conflicting constraints. But in our case, we only have one constraint, so it, it's got to be the former, that we're missing something. All right, no problem. Well, we know that we can't make more than is demanded, so let's add that one in. We click Add, and we say those made must be equal to exactly those demanded. We hit OK. That's in there now. We hit Solve. OK, Solver did find a solution. Let's take a look. So it's decided that to maximize profit, Tech A should make most of product one and all of product two, and Tech D should make all of product uh, three. Cool, that works. Um, except until we look up here and realize, wait a minute, Tech A doesn't know how to make product two, and Tech D doesn't know how to make product three. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we're going to add some more constraints. Pause it right now and see if you can think through and figure out how to add these constraints in there. If you can do this on your own, it's even better. Okay, so I'm assuming you either didn't pause it or at this point you feel like you've got it figured out or you're totally lost. So let's go through and, and make this work. We need to add, obviously, more constraints. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say that this cell right here, tech A, this has to be equal to zero. That's because they can't make that product. Therefore, we're going to constrain this cell, this cell to always equal zero. Add that one. And now you see how this works. Tech B can't make product three. Therefore, cell E15 must equal zero. Add. Tech C can't make one and two. I can actually grab both of those cells at once because they're next to each other. Both of those must equal zero. Add. Tech D can't make product one or product two. Sorry, product three. Okay, so we've got all those in there. Now let's solve it one more time. Solver could not find a feasible solution. Mm, something else is wrong. So let's think through our existing uh, constraints and see where we may have a problem. Here's our first one. This says that our the, the B13 through 15, that means our amount made, must equal those demanded. Yet we couldn't get all the way to 50 right here for this product. Why would that be? Well, let's look at our other constraints. Hours worked is equal to hours available. Hmm, so there's no room at all there to budge. We can't work any more hours. What we've done is we've set up a constraint that doesn't work with another constraint. We can't get enough hours to make this many products unless we relax this constraint and allow them to work more hours. Well, in reality, which one's going to be likely um, or which one's going to be possible? I can't hire someone last second. Okay, I've only got so many hours to work with. However, I can make fewer products. So I'm going to have to relax that constraint. So let's go here to that one and let's change. And what would we do to relax this constraint a little bit? Well, we're not going to make more than is demanded. Uh, however, based on the number of hours we have available, we may have to make less than is demanded. So amount made, it, we need to change that to allow it to be less than or equal to the amount demanded. OK. Now let's try solving it. OK. Solver found a solution. And here's what it wants us to do. It wants us to make 78 of product 1, 34.2857 of product 2. Wait a minute. 
that's not going to work, right? I can't make partial products. Uh, I need to. I can only make whole products. So I need to add one more constraint to make this work. So hit OK and return to the dialog box. And we're going to have to change or add one more constraint. So click Add. In this case, we want to make sure that none of the uh, units made are anything but integers. So we click on this, go down to Int. Therefore, that won't allow decimal places. Hit OK. Now let's solve it. There we go. TechD makes 34 of those, 78, 50 hours worked. We're not using quite all of our hours because we can't make a partial product anymore. But total profits now happily uh, optimized at 1206. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of this. Let's go ahead and move to the candy bars example down at the bottom. All right, so in this case, uh, I, I make multiple types of candy bars. They each have ingredients. Ingredients have costs and I have a certain amount of profit that I make per candy bar. I have a demand here, how many candy bars I expect to sell, and what I want to optimize is my total profit by having Solver tell me how many of each type I should make. But of course there's constraints. I only have so many ingredients. So let's go ahead and set up the Solver, click Solver. We want to optimize C18. Uh, we want it to be maximized by changing the total amount made. Let's hit solve. Oh, let's change this first to simplex LP. Hit solve. Objective cell values do not converge. Okay, we probably need to add some constraints, so we hit OK. First of all, we know that uh, we can't use um, no, let's not use that one. Let's let's work with demand first. Okay, we don't want to make uh, more than we demand or less. Let's go in here and add a constraint that says amount made must equal amount demanded. Now we learned in the last example that it's possible that making exactly that amount may not work based on other constraints. But let's start with that one and then we'll relax that constraint only if we need to. So I'll hit OK. Let's go ahead and solve. Alright, so it makes exactly that many. We make 1700 in profit, and then we look down here and realize, okay, here's our problem. We're using more ingredients than we have available in three out of four of the ingredients. Okay, so let's go back and let's add another constraint. Amount used must be less than or equal to amount available. Okay, and we learned from the last one about this integer constraint. Uh, can we make partial candy bars? No, we can't. So let's go ahead and just make sure it's not always going to be a problem depending on how the the solution solved but let's just make sure that the integer constraint isn't a problem and let's say that total made has to be in integer form no decimals alright simplex LP we hit solve solver could not find a feasible solution okay let's take a look what exactly is going on now hmm Okay, let's go ahead and look at the first one. Demand has to equal, so total made has to equal to demand. That's where we had a problem before. Is it possible that total made, or total, if, if we make exactly what's demanded, that we'll use too many ingredients in some cases? Well, that's exactly what we found last time. In three out of four cases, it uses too many. So we're going to have to relax that demand, or uh, that constraint, where total made equals demand. So let's hit change. And just think about it for a second. How do we relax this constraint? Do we allow ourselves to make more than is demanded? Sometimes that is how you relax a constraint. In this case, though, it's going to be like our last problem. We want to. Uh, it's okay to make less than is demanded because we know we may not have enough ingredients. But since the same ingredients are shared across multiple candy bars, we do need Solver to tell us exactly how many fewer of each type to make. So yes, change this to. Uh, total made can be less than or equal to the total demanded. Hit OK. Now we solve. Found a solution. Life is good. This constraint is met. It never exceeds available. And we decided to get out of the Snickers business, which is too bad because those are the best ones. Oh well. That's our that's our answer to the to this one. We make twelve fifty. All right. I'm gonna cancel out and let's do the last one. Staffing. So in this case. We are an airline uh, that needs to decide how many 
people to uh, to call into work each day. Every time we call someone in to staff, um, sorry, in particular, a call center at a large airline, um, the people, the employees, work for five days straight and then have two days off. So what's happening here is every time we uh, call in 25 people, those 25 people are going to be there on that day plus the next four days. Therefore, I'm going to click on um, I'm going to click on the, this cell so you can see the formula. The formula includes 25 on Sunday plus the 25 who are called in Saturday, Friday, Thursday, and Wednesday because each of those people will still be there by Sunday since they work five days straight. So each cell, the formula in it includes that day plus the previous five days uh, in its total staff scheduled. So our constraint is pretty straightforward. We've got to have at least this many staff for those days. We know what demand is. What we need to decide um, is exactly how many to start on each day. So this should be straightforward. Let's open Solver. We want to minimize total staff needed because that minimizes our cost. So I'm going to change that to a min. We're going to change these cells right here, how many are called in. Let's go ahead and hit solve and it'll probably tell us zero. Yep, zero each day. That's obviously going to give us a total staff unit of zero. Well, that's not realistic because then we don't have enough people to staff. So we hit OK. We come back here and let's add one constraint. We can do this in a couple of different ways. Basically, we need to have at least this many staff there. We can say that staff scheduled must be greater than or equal to staff needed and try that or you may have thought about this already we could also simply say we have this excess staff field here we could also just say excess staff must equal or be greater than or equal to and just type in the number zero excess staff has to be greater than zero either one of those will work it'll do the same thing I'm gonna hit OK and go ahead and try and solve this first change to simplex LP though solve alright it found a feasible solution. 191 and two thirds of a staff are needed. Ah, I remember, okay, I've got this constraint. Whole people only. Obviously, I can't call in one and two thirds people. So I go back here, add my integer constraint, and say that starting staff must be integers. Okay. Solve away. There we go, 192 people. Now, at this point, you may find and actually it's possible you may have found this in a previous example too you may have a different number of oops I meant to keep that solver solve there we go I no longer want the dialog box so I uncheck that hit OK alright you may have different numbers of excess staff you might have 17 people on Saturday and one someone else somewhere else that's actually perfectly okay as long as total staff needed is still not 192 the way we solve these things, there are often more than one solution that reaches the same optimal point. And that's perfectly acceptable. Unfortunately, Excel doesn't tell us what each of those options are. But don't stress if you have a different solution as long as your optimized value is the same as mine. So that's our example on uh, Solver. Um, I'd go through these and see if you can do them all on your own without my help. And uh, also do the problems one more time and uh, that should get you ready for the exam.